Okay. So in my presentation, I'll be talking a bit about what is the need for an integrated planning approach, what are the steps in planning, and the recommendation and plan for the Shadamani Sapkinal. I'll tell you a bit more about Shadamani Sapkinal. So yes, everybody is saying this, Alapura is the Venice of the East, what are the original Venice? So everybody is like, why doesn't Alapura become like the original Venice? What is the condition of Venice? Are we aware of it? Anybody has been to Venice? Anybody? You been to Venice? Yeah, so can you can you tell us a bit more because this is just secondary data which I've got. How, how, how are the canals there? Very dirty. Very dirty, okay. So the, the canals in Venice, they also are pretty dirty and uh, it, the city relies on a 16th century sanitation system which are underground pipes called ghettolis and the waste water is transported to the canals through these pipes and it is the tidal fluctuations in the Venice lagoon which keeps it relatively cleaner. But still when the Venice, um, when the city gets flooded during monsoon and all, there are pictures of people actually playing in that water without even realizing that it is actually waste water. Right, there are photos of people frolicking in the Venetian waters, but unfortunately, I don't know whether they do know it or don't know, but Venice is always touted as the aspirational city for canals. However, studies have shown that there is an abundance of E. coli in the waters, from untraceable to 10 days to 4 colony forming units. And the different strains of E. coli which are found are pretty pathogenic. They are not the benign kind and they can indicate presence of other pathogens which might be dangerous for human health. So this is the condition of Venice canals and let's for now agree that Venice is not the aspiration which we are going to be. Is that okay? Let's have an, our own model of the perfect canals. Right? No? Okay, so how critical is this liquid waste management? So somebody yesterday mentioned about Belandur Lake. Yes? So what is happening in Belandur Lake? Frothing of the lakes. Catching fire. Yes. So in February it caught fire, the lake, the complete lake caught fire. So why is this happening in Belandur Lake? Why is this happening? Sorry? Lot of discharge of industrial effluents into the lake. Okay? And? So BWSSB, are you guys aware of BWSSB? BWSSB is Bangalore Water and uh, Sewerage uh, Board. Water Supply and Sewerage Board. BWSSB. So they are operating 19 STPs in Bangalore. Okay, nine more are in the pipeline. So out of these 19 STPs, a remarkable portion of untreated sewage is reaching the Belandur Lake. And it is due to this untreated sewage coupled with a small portion of industrial effluents that the lake froths over. So it is actually sewage which is causing this frothing over of the lake. Okay. So that shows that it is very important to manage the septage or sewage which is being generated at households. They pose grave risk otherwise, if not managed properly. So this is some data on septic tank coverage in, uh, in Kerala. 56.69% of households have septic tanks and 21.87% of pit latrines. While households have a connection to centralized sewer system is about 14.32%. Sir mentioned yesterday about two cities in Kerala which have sewer network but still the coverage is very low in those cities and it's only 14% of the population in Kerala which has a centralized um, sewerage network access. In Alapura specifically there is no sewerage system and the septic tank, uh, the households connected to septic tank is 45% and ventilated and improved pit is 27.24%. These are nothing but leach pits ventilated pits. So now coming to the sanitation service chain. Are you, are you familiar with this picture? So this is the sanitation service
service chain which is happening, uh, this is the standard sanitation service chain where first there is a user interface, there is a collection and storage system, conveyance, treatment and disposal and reuse and this is, is this applicable to RFP? You think so? Yes, no? Since RFP does not, we have established that we don't have a centralized sewage network. So does this work in case of allergy? No? Why? There is no conveyance. There is no treatment. There is no disposal or reuse according to this particular diagram. Right? There is, in allergy, since there is no centralized network, this particular sanitation service chain cannot be applied in the city's context. And there is a reason why there is no centralized system in LRP. Any of you can guess the reason why a centralized system is not possible in LRP? Space problem. Space problem, yes. Terrain. Terrain. Perfect. Flat topography, right? And how does terrain matter? You'll have to pump it or else. Right? That costs energy. Okay? ONM increases. What else? What else is that particular feature about LRP which makes it pretty difficult to have a sewage network? Yeah. High water table. High water table, exactly. Okay? LRP has very high water table. There's no space for a sewage treatment plant. In fact, LRP is a district where there are no forests. There's no reserve forests. Out of all the districts in Kerala, there are no forests in LRP. So imagine, and, and the population density is also pretty high. So imagine that there's no space even for vegetation, how do you expect to find out space for a vast sewage network as well as a treatment plant? So we are coming to the planning steps here. And uh, before going towards the planning steps, I, am, I just want to refresh your memory from yesterday's slides. Uh, you guys are familiar with the Marthoma Church Sapkana, right? No? Pilot area. The pilot area we've talked about. The pilot area which was presented yesterday, that is the Marthoma Church Sapkana. Alright? So, we did talk about the delineation of watersheds or canal sheds and all. Yes, the concept of canal shed was explained to you. Yes? So this is the Marthoma Church Sapkanal, the canal shed. Alright? So this is a pilot area and the plan or our objective was to finally have a treatment uh, system or an alternative treatment system for that canal. Right? We have established during winter school that it is during, it is from subcanals that the maximum pollution is generated and that drains into the main canal. So it is imperative that we address the pollution in subcanal first. So there is a need to understand what <coughs> sort of factors are contributing to that pollution. You saw about solid waste yesterday, yesterday that how solid waste is contributing the pollution in canals. So now we will be today looking at how liquid waste is contributing to the pollution in the same canals. Okay? Like yesterday, the pilot area is the Chakanad, uh, uh, sorry, the uh, Marthama Church Sakyanal. So there are three wards uh, through which this Sakyanal is going through. It is uh, uh, Chakanad, Mannat Ward and Tonangulamara. Okay? So, so, in order to identify the extent of uh, uh, pollution and uh, to how to tackle it, how to uh, come up with alternate strategies to tackle it, there is a need to first study the canal. There is a need to Understand the physical characteristics of the subcanal. Secondly, to understand the socio-economic characteristics and liquid waste management practices of the households which are there. And identify technologies which are appropriate for each household. Right? So these are the three steps which comes under it. And these are our objectives for this particular study. So how did we go about doing it? Initially, we did a secondary data collection and a desk study. We identified some key stakeholders. Uh, we evolved a questionnaire. There was an evolution of questionnaire over a period of the past one year almost. 
and then we collected some primary data and the analysis followed. Okay, so secondary data collection involved collecting uh, maps from the municipality, cadastral maps from uh, Tvandrum, and uh, uh, data about canals, about households, about different wards, and uh, desk study about the different kinds of septic tanks and uh, soap pits which are available in the market today to identify and understand the working, to identify whether a septic tank is actually a septic canal, uh, tank or not the different standards associated with it and then we identified some key stakeholders since we have to if we have to work on a pilot area it is imperative that we get the support of the councillors there yesterday you saw the councillors of Shadamani canal right that is the second sub canal we are taking up so initially we had a talk with the councillors from the sub canal there uh, Martha Machar sub canal uh, we uh, they they were they came on board and they also agreed to uh, our uh, uh, you know survey and they helped us in data collection and uh, all allied activities. So there are three things which basically happened. So there's a socio-economic study, water quality analysis, and technical study which we conducted. So this is how we collected the primary data. Okay, so uh, socio-economic study is again to understand the socio-economic profile of the people who are living there. Uh, the class of people, uh, the different uh, uh, practices which they follow, their plot size, how much area they have for alternate systems, if the systems there are found to be problematic. Water quality analysis, this was done to uh, understand the water quality uh, in case of wells and the KWA water collection. And the third was technical study, delineation of canal shed, mapping physical features, house, household level uh, plot mapping. So we've already talked about delineation of canal sheds, how that was done during the last summer school. So I have to tell you that these, this methodology is a combined methodology for data which were collected over the course of the last one year. So there were different phases of data collection. There was the last winter school, there was summer school, there were activities which happened in between the last summer school, that last summer school and winter school. Yeah, there are uh, multiple surveys which happened, multiple studies and uh, and uh, activities through which we have. Uh, so first, we need to understand the current existing situation. Right, there has to be a situation analysis in place before we go ahead with planning and proposing alternate solutions if needed. So for that. Um, Uh, there were basically two components of the study which were identified, as I mentioned earlier. It is the socio-economic study and the technical study. So, so the socio-economic study, it was basically a questionnaire-based survey. I'll be talking a bit more in detail about the questionnaire, which we use the different elements of the questionnaire and all. But what I want to understand is that this was done using ODK. You've heard about ODK by now, I'm sure. We'll be having a session about ODK after this. And that, that really made data collection as well as analysis very 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 easy and it was using mobile phones which is pretty commonplace nowadays and it did not involve any paperwork or transferring uh, you know manual labor in inputting the data to excel or anything so that that, that made it very convenient for us that also helped us in easier analysis of data the second was uh, technical study uh, it involves studying the physical character of the canals and on-site practices. So this I'll be, uh, in the next slide, I'll be detailing it out. And the third one was key stakeholder interviews. So one of the aspects of liquid waste management is uh, um, fecal sludge. Right? Yesterday, uh, you did hear a lot about fecal sludge management. You heard a lot about, uh, you know, honeysuckers and uh, how they, uh, there is no, uh, sorry? Desludging, yes. But there is no current uh, alternative or uh, any treatment or disposal option for fecal sludge in the whole of Kerala. Devanahalli in Bangalore has an FSTP plant, but Kerala, people are still throwing away, uh, dumping the waste into either water bodies or fields. So, to understand what is happening there, we identified a few stakeholders and we had interviews with them. So, this part will be detailed to you uh, during a presentation on FSTPs by Parish. Okay, so I will be concentrating on the socio-economic study and the technical study. And once you have analysis, you will understand the physical features, the socio-economic character and the practices. And 
and from there you have certain findings and from those findings you can actually propose technical options which are appropriate for each context and when i say context i don't mean households it doesn't mean that every household needs an alternative solution there might be situations where you have to take a cluster of households together and propose a solution for them in case of land in the constraints or uh, um, yeah space constraints can be community or individual level and in case of community level this is another uh, um, uh, exercise we have conducted wherein uh, we have uh, done an identification of beneficiaries uh, which i'll be detailing in the next section yes this is about the technical study which, is there any doubt till now any questions or anything is that is that clear because this is something which you will be doing from tomorrow so hopefully it is clear yeah okay so this is about the physical character and on site sanitation practices during winter school 2017 uh, several encroachments were identified uh, uh, in the canals there were li liquid waste and solid waste hotspots which were identified in the canals and the mapping of sub canals and drains happened by using usm is usm familiar to you usm okay usm is another uh, application app which can be used for tracking uh, purposes so this really helped us in uh, um, uh, tracking the drains and identifying and the major part of the technical study it happened during the summer school 2018 there in delineation of canal shed and civil engineering survey was done so civil engineering survey is to firstly the canals are in a bad shape at least the sub canals we do know that and one of the reasons is the sediments which have deposited there the solid waste which has accumulated there and it has completely altered the canal profile right so there is a need to identify to measure the length width of the canal what is the canal profile currently what should be the canal profile the corrected canal profile and then see how much amount of desludging should be done to reach that particular canal profile is that clear yes and the recent activity was this on site sanitation survey in which um to um, in the in the pilot area this uh, survey was conducted only recently around october last october it was conducted and uh, two rows of households near the canals on the side of the canals they were identified around 200 households were there and uh, uh, we collected the liquid waste solid waste sorry liquid waste yeah, solid waste also management practices from them and another thing which was done was we did a household level plot so uh, site plan and service plan for all of these households just these 200 households so uh, students went there they were given appropriate training by the uh, kila research associates who are with you they were given training and uh, they went there they measured the different aspects setback uh, distance from boundary wall to the uh, structure and they made a proper drawing which was later converted into autocad and now we have a3 drawings of all 200 households and this will eventually help us in deciding what is the appropriate technology for them. so that is one data set which we have at our disposal which will aid us in decision making so coming to the uh, the socio economic study and the questionnaire which i earlier talked about so this questionnaire has been uh, has been um, uh, piloted as well as uh, revised many times over i am now um, detailing the key parameters which are there in the questionnaire and uh, the relevance of the same and how it will eventually help us in uh, uh, preparing a proposed action plan okay so Firstly, we need the family uh, composition. We need to understand the per capita water consumption uh, of the households in order to design a system. Yes. So, how do we calculate that? Population. Sorry. Population. How many people are living? How many people are living? Yes. But once you get the uh, source of water, quantity of water, and family composition, how do you calculate the total amount of waste water which is there? 80%. 80%. Right, 80% of the water gets converted to waste water. So that is something which is critical because while I then while designing a system we need to understand the waste water quantity generated. So this is a critical data which needs to be collected. Uh the current liquid waste disposal practices 
which are there to identify whether that particular practice is happening properly or we need to retrofit the system so for all these things then we were uh, looking to now the next thing which we found was during our winter school i think this was covered yesterday uh, during our winter school we found that many of the septic tanks which people mentioned were septic tanks were actually soap pits one of the questions is whether the bottom was sealed or not the material which was used for construction the shape of the septic tank the number of chambers and so usually in the septic tank there are uh, three main kinds of septic tank which is there in uh, uh, which is found in our country one is the ring type so the the middle one is the ring type one which is not actually a septic tank it is a soap pit wherein you just keep rings on top of each other there is no bottom okay and then you close it okay and this is one question which you will be asking them that what is the side wall made of is it ring type okay the second is a masonry structure which is shown here okay that is another kind of septic tank it is a mason brick and uh, uh, mortar masonry structure and the last one is the prefab frp or plastic septic tanks all right these are the different kinds of septic tanks which are found and only these two are proper scientific septic tanks okay since it is rings there is a possibility of water leaking from the sides and hence and there is no insulation there is no cementing which has been done so okay another question which is of importance is the distance between wall and septic tank and according to kerala municipality building rules a minimum of 7.5 meter distance should be there between the wall and septic tank this especially is critical uh, because of the fact that most of the water um, uh, the ground water uh, wells dug wells as well as tube wells in alappura are contaminated we will be looking at the data in some time and uh, uh, so in the distance between the wells as well as the septic tank is also important and that is also another parameter which was identified the width of the approach road to check accessibility in case of installation of the new system the land occupied by the existing system and the land which is available for new system and the willingness to install a new system so their consent was asked for whether they want a new system to be installed okay coming to the analysis now this sorry this is the uh, pilot area and uh, uh, this as you can see these are the survey numbers which are there so it is pretty densely populated but these are pretty much densely populated the number of households which are surveyed were 200 this happened in the most recent survey which happened in october in which i told you that they made site plans and service plans for the Uh, households, each household. So this, the what, the analysis is of that particular survey data. Thirty-five of them were not surveyed. Uh, the total population was found to be eight hundred and ten, and the household size was found to be four point zero. These are the just. Ah, uh, the plot size distribution. If you see uh, below three cents, it is almost twenty-one percent. This one, below three cents is twenty-one percent. Three to five cents is twenty-eight percent. 5 to 7 cents 14%, 7 to 10 cents also 14% and about 10 cents 23%. You know how much is a cent, right? Anybody knows how much can anybody who doesn't know can raise their hands up. 40 meters square. Okay? It is 40 meters square. Approximately 40 meters square. So, uh so you can you have an idea of the area of the household now. Right? And we can see that almost 50% of the um uh, of the households are below 5 cents okay and uh, when you go back to the map there is a very thickly populated area somewhere here okay and that is a that is a colony called a municipal uh, colony and people are living there in small small settlements and uh, it's only it's only 3 to 5 cents max 5 cents there their uh, uh, household area and they using a community toilet Though they have individual systems in their place, but some of the, there is a community toilet also in place. And this is an area where individual systems identifying or uh, sorry designing and installation of individual systems would become very difficult because they already had a septic tank below their toilet, and there is no place other than that for them. So we need to go in for a community level system. Okay. Uh, as i told you this is the canal profile of uh, the mardoma church sub canal 
you can see there are a lot of undulations here and this is the corrected level of the corrected uh, uh, reduced level of the sarcoma so this is how the canal level should be so that proper flow happens where this is how it is currently okay and for this canal level to be achieved almost 948 meter cubes of sludge has to be desilted and removed from these canals now this is the household site and the uh, service plan which was made for the uh, for these 200 households this is the template which was followed now there are uh, canal be interns who are there amongst you who are doing the survey along with you they have um, they have painstakingly done this they have gone to each household in a paper they have collected these details you know what is a setback what is how much is there a well or where is the septic tank what is the distance between each structure and the service plan also where are the water pipes where is the meter water meter all these details were collected they converted into a um, uh, yeah this one okay so um, you know that canals uh, for proper flow to happen there should be a certain canal profile which must be maintained a certain gradient which must be maintained right now the problem with the sub canals is that during the course of all these years a lot of soil waste has been uh, deposited or a lot of sediments have been deposited a lot of encroachments have been there and that has obstructed the flow right so for proper flow to be maintained there is a need for desludging but then how do you understand how much desludging has to be done that is a question right so for that there was a leveling survey which was done during the summer school by civil engineering students who understood that this particular canal profile has to be corrected to this and so that means there's a lot of sediment which have to be taken um, out from it it has to be desilted it has to be desludged so that's what i said almost 948 meter cubes of uh, sludge deposited at the end of the canal have to be taken out and that process is happening just be treated after yes it has to be treated after after taking in fact it has to be dried and it, ha it has to be processed properly yes so the question about what are we going to do with the sludge after we take it out the irrigation department has identified uh, certain Um, you know that you know, uh, like two kilometers from here, the Kupinad ecosystem starts, the Vebenad, and then the Vebenad ecosystem is like one to three meters below sea level, and it's a rice growing system, and rice is grown like you know by making bunds around the you know shallow backwaters, and the water is pumped out, and that's how this bit. So these outer bunds need a lot of reinforcing. So they are going to use it for that. So that is, then it's a. But now it's kind of you know making they are making concrete bunks and all. It's not eco friendly. So that, that's one of the reasons why the floods happened also. So we are planning to utilize that for that 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 part. Also, you talked about participatory governance and involving people into your design policy. Uh, but what is the participatory element in your campaign, which involves the local community? It, it cannot be, uh, you know, these, these things cannot be planned with everybody there. And we should be. And I told you honestly yesterday that I didn't see any community. I didn't see any citizen. If you go out and ask people, they won't participate. I, I was very clear about that yesterday. So that's why we we need somebody to kind of trigger this. That's a student citizen who will go and talk with them, and you know, kind of make them kind of participate in what way. Segregation, they should do. You know, they should be paying for the use of heat. You know, that's the kind of participation that we kind of, you know. And then, uh, of course, if there is a polluter, the the committee should kind of come together and you know, kind of tell that. For the for all that, you need kind of very uh, what do you call it, committed two or three people who should be kind of doing that. Otherwise, everybody coming is a very romantic concept. You know, deliberative democracy and things. So, coming from an organizational background, we. Studying our participation processes through the design policy and the involvement of the local people in the regeneration somehow um, ensures the longer lasting. So currently the canal is integrated because there is no function attached to it. So people hadn't had any use of it, that's why we started polluting. So even after the regeneration, if there is no function attached to the local community, how do you ensure that it stays that way? Yeah, small canal.
canals, it's very difficult to get a utility that way in the small canals. You know, because these are, you will see that, you know, it's actually something like one to three meters wide and, you know, it's very difficult to kind of... So the first thing is to not make them drain. That's the, that's the first thing. The utility is being made in the dark for big canals. I don't know whether everybody was there when I started in the beginning. Last one, 1.5 kilometer stretch, we are going to have it as a old heritage area. Where people are, the youth in Alapi are going to see the utility of the canal by the tourism future that they have. So one, one thing is, you know, a hop-in, hop-out board system, where instead of the auto rickshaws and all that currently tourists use, can you have a hop-in, hop-out, you know, board system which can actually run through half of the canal at least, or maybe the full length of the canal also. And that will actually bring in aeration and, you know, it will actually kind of, you know, rejuvenate the system also in a way. That, that's one way. Second, on both sides of the canal, having you know shops and you know kind of parks and those kinds of areas, which will make a, some kind of a utility of the major canals. But then to make the major canals clean, minor canals have to be. Okay. I just think that there's an association between the local community and if they uh, feel like they there's some ownership involved of theirs, if there's a stake involved with them with the canal. Yeah, you know, I have been in this business of participation for the last 20 years and uh, so with no offences men, in urban uh, context, it's very difficult for people to kind of spontaneously participate in all And it's very difficult for utility to be kind of identified everywhere. If, if you have a plan, you are most welcome. We will try it out. But I am not, from my experience and my personal experience in Arabi, I spent at least kind of um, maybe more than 100 days in Alapi, you know, now. And I, I belong to here also, my mother's place is in Alapi. So looking at all that, you know, working here, I'm not very optimistic that there will be a huge community participation. The community is fragmented into ethnicity, like caste, class, gender, politics, you know, all these kinds of things. So, so and why should they participate? I told you, you know. They have to run for their livelihoods every morning. Otherwise, it should be like a very elite community, like in the Bangalore case, where you know there, there could be you know some people who could actually kind of spend their time to kind of come. I don't see in small towns to kind of have a Bangalore model also, or the Sabarmati community. I don't know what it is. So those kinds of things may not work uh, in, in Alapi. Is what I think. But you are most welcome if you have any ideas. So this is uh, this is the question which we had asked during summer school as to how toilet waste is disposed in households and all the green ones are septic tank according to the people. Okay, now when you go to the next slide, you see that when we tested whether that is actually a septic tank or a soap pit, we found that all the green ones which they had listed were actually soap pits. Okay, so coming to black water analysis. Okay, so almost 55% of the septic tank, the outfall is to a soap pit. Uh, there is no outfall for almost 25% and for 17% the outfall is to the ground. That is the first graph. This is, as I said, every septic tank, it must have an outfall into a soap pit so that it functions efficiently. Because the outfall, it consists of a pretty high BOD uh, effluent, which if directly released into the ground can contaminate the groundwater as well as when it reaches the subcanal, it can contaminate the surface water. So this particular, gra uh, this particular map is of the different black water disposal methods which are being used by the people in the um, Chathanad area, in, in our pilot area, the Markama Church Satkinal. So we can see that most of the people there, it is in red. They are using a leach pit for black water disposal. Very few of them are using a septic tank and only at one place there is a community septic tank. Coming to grey water analysis, 
uh, almost 55 percent of the people were letting off the grey water directly into the drain, and they admitted it, admitted to it during our survey. And that is because they have one thing they don't have any idea about how damaging it can be, how much polluting it can be. When we look at the uh, the water in the drains, more than black water, we find that uh, there are elements of grey water there due to high TSS. The total suspended solids in the water is pretty high, whereas the BOD is not that much. This was according to a water quality which was done earlier. Now there is high TSS and low BOD that indicates that there might be more black, sorry, grey water contamination than black water contamination. Uh, only 15.5 percent people have a leach pit for grey water. The rest of them, almost 55 plus 27 percent, they either release it into the drain or to the ground. So grey water remains to be one of the important streams of age water flow which have to be restricted and treated. So again, here is the uh, grey water disposal methods. Nearby drain, you can see that there are a lot of red dots. And this is the well to septic tank distance which we had measured earlier. Now when we couple it with the water quality analysis, we can see that out of the duck wells, uh, out of the whole number of duck wells, around 261 of them were tested for water quality and almost 93% of them had E. coli contamination, which is, which is the same in most parts of Kerala. If you look at the water, it is contaminated and it makes sense. There is no septic or seepage network here. Okay, septic tank effluence it eventually finds a place to the groundwater, but then why aren't there any disease instances then? Kerala should be a hotbed of epidemics throughout the year. Water is being boiled, right? Most of the places where we found these high levels of contamination, the people there had one or two cases of dengue or uh, in the past year. I mean, we would have expected every year for them to get some sort of diseases, from waterborne diseases at least. So, okay, now this is an analysis of the survey. All right. So, we are asking a question on whether the septic tank has a ventilation pipe or not. So, if not uh, maintained, if a, if a ventilation pipe is not maintained, it can uh, affect the efficiency of the septic tank and also it can provide uh, uh, to be a problem to the structural integrity of the septic tank. Okay. Ventilation pipes, they release all the anaerobic, uh, uh, the byproducts of the anaerobic reaction, H2S and methane, into the air and not having it might affect the integrity. Uh, and the uh, presence of separate system for grey and black water, if not separated, it can again affect uh, the uh, efficiency of the system. Uh, now, septic tank, uh, one, uh, it's always optimal to have low water content in any anaerobic treatment system. Once you dilute it, then the process takes quite some days. The settling process will take days. There will be large water flows to be handled. So it's always better to separate the waste streams and then treat them. Size appropriateness again for designing a system as well as maintaining an optimal level. Because there must be an optimal level of sludge in the system for the anaerobic digestion process to actually happen. So it is important that the septic tank is size appropriate for that particular household. Um, yeah, the presence of mosquito proofing, it can, the ventilation, um, uh, the pipes, they usually have a mosquito proofing net on top of them. This is just to, as a, uh, uh, as a public health hazard, this is according to CPHEO, but then many of the places we see that these things are not taken care of and ideally they should be in place. Uh, frequency of using toilet cleaners, over usage of toilet cleaners like heart tech, it may affect the biological degradation process. All these are chemicals which can affect the health of the bacteria and other microorganisms. So these are even the detergents in the grey water for that matter. They contain surfactants and these can affect the cell walls, right? They can kill those organisms and it eventually affects, again affects the efficiency of that septic water. That is again one more reason to separate both the black water as well as grey water streams. Odor uh, from the septic tank or leach pit, um, now it either indicates the failure in the structural integrity or operational problems in the system, especially when there is no vent pipe in place and you have an order from septic tank then 
it indicates to a leakage and uh, there were households so below each of them i have uh, I've stated the result also so there are at least nine houses which have reported this in the um, uh, municipal committee sorry the markama church canal shed and those houses have to be investigated so these houses have been marked we have the data about which house has which problem associated with this occurrence also um, frequency of using toilet cleaners there are natural toilet cleaners available there are toilet cleaners which can be made from home uh, you use citrus fruits for that and uh, salt salt is used in okay salt and uh, sorry yeast i have heard of baking soda also baking soda also uh, the only problem is that uh, for toilet there is this um hartwig has made that white sanitary uh, you know look of it very aspirational so if it even dims a little if it becomes a shade darker we we associate that with dirty toilets right so these cleaners can actually be used in our households but then they won't give you that particular bleached effect okay yeah so that is the problem with these natural cleaners and so that means that there has to be a, a change in the way it is perceived in which cleanliness is perceived in the first place for people to accept these natural cleaners and which i'm pretty sure is going to take a lot of time when we talk of perception change or behavior change that is not a one day or a one campaign um, you know process it takes education to actually change it so that is that is a dream which may or may not be possible in our lifetime but let us at least try to promote natural cleaners and there might be households which are off there might be households which don't but it remains that frequency of using toilet cleaners must be um, reduced at least so from these all these uh, uh, data which we have uh, there are two recommendations that we propose i will tell you about the municipal colony area right of then settlement of uh, you know marginal communities who have very less space and the other households which we have detailed about having a uh, pro no proper septic tanks in place so there are two particular approaches which can be taken so community level treatment unit for the municipal colony area which is in progress right now and the second is household appropriate technology option for the rest of the households for all the rest of the households we do have the site plan service plan their current system in place what is the problem with their current systems the amount of waste water which is being generated all the details about all that as well as whether they are willing to in, uh, to install a new system or not so all these data can help us in arriving at a contextual uh, at, at having a contextual understanding of the system in place and also arriving at a technology specific for that particular household